Hey world, this is Kimberly and Connor Tracy over here at Big Red SEO tuning in on this beautiful Friday. I'm in the I'm in the swirly chair. I'm kind of excited, so I have to like control myself and say sit in one spot. Usually I'm in the white like in one spot chair. Yeah, I've got the white chair. Yeah, but like I have to also like make sure I don't bounce back and forth because sometimes it gets super squeaky. See, now why is it that I'm so big on the screen and you're... I don't know if I can politically as your wife answer that question in a good way. <laughs> If that makes sense. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to dive into Connor's world of what's the updates that are happening in the search engines. Um, this week, we actually have a little bit of fun going on uh, because we decided to do it in three different sections of updates. It's going to be about BERT, about Chrome, and about Flash. Now, if you're new to the SEO world or if you're new to just internet marketing in general, you might be like, I don't really understand what any of this is. Um, if you have been in the world for a while, as soon as you heard the word flash, you probably knew where we're going and what we're doing. But <laughs> yeah, if you use flash still, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> it happens. Like, believe it or not, a lot of people actually do it. Um, and so like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things we just we're going to dive in and I'm going to give Connor the ability to just like roll into, hey, what's going on with the BERT update, if that makes sense. Sure. Uh, now that I've clicked the buttons and I'm good to go. Good old technical. I think. I don't know. If you can uh, see us on there, put a comment in the, the thing that you're able to see us. I'm yeah, sure you yeah. can see us. Um, anyway, um, yeah, a couple different things. So there's a few things we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, one is the BERT update, which is a, a big Google algorithm update. It's one of their largest that they've done in the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Flash, we've talked about URLs we're going to talk about, and yeah. then Chrome, and uh, some of the new stuff happening in the Chrome browser, and Chromium, which is what the is Microsoft it, stuff uses. It's an so. interesting word. Chromium. Yeah. What was it again? Chrome. Chromium. Chromium. Got it. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Okay. It's a bird. Uh, not, no. not related to Not related to Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Uh, BERT is the new big update uh, that Google just had uh, literally within the last week and a half or so. Yeah. Um, now, it's a the grand scheme of things, BERT is a uh, linguistic update. It's to allow Google to understand what your searches actually mean. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I captured a, a section. Yeah. Uh, so I can read that directly. Yeah. Because uh, are you I, sure this isn't Sesame Street? If you're reading directly, it's a story. No, I know, but you know, here's the thing with Bert, it's so complicated that I can't even <laughs> articulate okay. the words. So try so to break it down. The Bert algorithm, and that's one thing to make sure that you understand. This is an algorithm update, not a stuff that you can do on your website. It's just basically how Google interprets the information. But Bert stands for the bi-directional encoder representations from transformers. What? Okay. The bi-directional encoder representations from transformers. Bert. Thanks, Google. Uh, you've made it wonderful. Uh, essentially what this is, it's a, uh, and the, the wording from their thing, it's a deep learning algorithm related to natural language processing helps a machine to understand what words in a sentence means, but with all the nuances of context. Is More anybody, big words. Is anybody else out there confused a little? Yeah. Just a um, little, little confused? Do you remember NLP, Neuro Linguistic Processing? No. Okay. So there's a tactic in sales. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, thanks for tuning in. You're going to see my face go really confused in a lot of areas. <laughs> There's a tactic in sales, and it's based around the neuro-linguistics processing that certain keywords that you use in a sales process yeah. triggers certain responses from a user. Okay. So instead of saying, you know, I have a problem with this or what is your problem with that, yeah. it's how can I help you resolve that problem? Oh. So there's ways of getting people to either shift to your side, which is what I use in arguments and conversations, and then there's... It's really good. I, I'm, I'm really good at the argument thing and using those words. Um, 
So there, there's ways of doing that. And it all has to do with the neuro-linguistic. And, and that's how your brain processes yeah. the words that are, are coming out. Unless it's me talking and then it may not process <laughs> anything. I just say things. Hey, so, Felipe, thanks for tuning in. Happy so, Friday. Yeah. So all, all of that neuro-linguistic processing, that it has to do with the content yeah. that will be used on your page. And that will help encourage a user from a search end of things. So let me give you an example. We're talking context. You with me, Kim? I'm trying. I'm so Kim's trying. with me. All right. My cheeks are hurting because I'm like smiling. I'm like, I, I, I'm trying to understand. Carry on, carry on. All right. On. So uh, to put everything into context of things, and one of the examples that somebody used um, was the phrase, if you put the phrase into the website, how to catch a cow fishing. <laughs> Kim. What's the first thing that comes catfish! to your mind? A cow fishing, right? Oh, I thought catfish. No. I not, screamed catfish. Not catfish. <laughs> so how to catch a cow fishing. And what Google's responses were, you know, before the things, um, it all had to do with cows and, and, you know, maybe fishing, but it really just had images of cows because that was the understanding of Google. That was their focus. They word. didn't go to catfish. No. But where's cat? <laughs> How to catfish is a fish. Anyway, carry on. How to catch? Hey, Casey, thanks for tuning in. A cow fishing, but anyways, uh, so the way Google's thing, the way their algorithm understood it was that it had to do with cows instead of the operative word in there being fishing. Okay. Okay. So in New Zing, in New England, uh, mm -hmm. the word cow in the context of fishing happens to be a large striped bass. Okay, so that's what the, that's the nickname behind it. Oh. So instead so instead of somebody saying how to catch a large striped bass fishing, they would say how to catch a cow fishing. A cow is the slang word. So now Google's new neurolinguistic processor, yeah. BERT, which is the biodirectional encoder representations from Transformers, <laughs> that now understands that a cow when related to fishing has to do with the striped bass. And now all the results, if you type it into Google now, how to catch a cow fishing, you'll get all the results about striped bass fishing. So that is what the update's about. I have a couple of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Not about the update specifically. First off, why are people that are fishing referencing to cows? It's kind of like catching a barn door. So a barn door is halibut. I wish Jeremy was tuning in. He might tell us from a farmer's perspective why they say <laughs> catching a barn door. Well, okay, cool. So, so the thought process is that these systems, the search engines, are figuring out as quick and as fast how to take layman's terms or language from multiple different people in multiple different scenarios that they say it, break it down to the common denominator to get the information the quickest and the fastest. Yes, it's the understanding of the nuances of speech. Okay, yeah. So if you're from the East Coast versus the West Coast, you might say one thing versus if you're originally from Oklahoma like I am, we say something else like pop versus soda. I was going to say like pop versus soda. Yeah, yeah. Where can I buy a pop? Yeah. Is that a lollipop or is it a soda? Or like fish and chips versus fish and fish and fries. <laughs> Can fish, and, <laughs> fish and chips versus fish and fries? Well, like you guys call fish and chips, like chips or potatoes, right? Versus if somebody goes like somewhere like in Oklahoma, they don't call it fish and potato or fish and chips. They call it fish and potatoes. Interesting. Get, make sense? Like the, so there's different areas. Sure. Okay, cool. So, and so what is it that business owners need to know, breaking it down to where we understand it now? So one of the things, and, and there's theories going around, there, the problem with this is that it's so new that there's no real thing that you can do on your website to fix or prepare for it. Okay. So one of the theories going around, and it's, it's kind of been debunked a little bit, uh, was the use of stop words. And stop words, when we're talking about doing titles and descriptions yeah. in a web page, we generally don't use words like to, for, in, things like that, because yeah. it, it's considered a stop word mm -hmm. and it's left off by Google, like the word and. Yeah. Okay. Now it actually means something to the context, in the context, to the context, it means something. <laughs> <laughs> so... If you are looking for uh, the cheapest airline ticket to Bolivia, for example, 
Google is going to use the word to as being the operator okay. to understand that you're trying to get to Bolivia. Okay. Now, if you're doing a search, the cheapest airline ticket to Bolivia from Omaha, it's understanding that the to is attached to Bolivia. Okay. The from is from Omaha, rather than just giving you the results of Omaha and Bolivia. Bolivia. Big word. Bolivia? Yeah. <laughs> it's got the same amount of letters as Omaha, but okay. <laughs> so essentially, that is the new update. What do you do to prepare for it? Nothing. Actually, I take that back. The thing that you have to do to make sure that this works correctly is that you have to have content on your website that makes sense. Yeah. You can't have gibberish on there. You can't have partial sentences. You can't have... Uh, a paragraph that jumps around from spot to spot. It needs to all make sense. It needs to be together in the same context. Okay. And that's what's going to help the algorithm understand things. So from Connor's perspective in general, getting into your brain, how mm -hmm. your brain works, what was what would be the intention or the purpose for the search engines to create this form of update, especially with it being so big that they haven't been able to put it into a box yet? Sure. So, Do you have any theories, thoughts, processes? Yeah. So at the end of the day, part of the the research paper that was written and part of how they were granted this patent, yeah. it has to do with the searches that people are making are okay. now sentences oh, and okay. not just keywords. And some of that ties over because it's a voice search. Okay. So you're searching using your phone. How do I find the closest pizza shop? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a... It's a request for how do I find? So now Google understands I need a map and direction. Okay. The pizza shop being the thing that you're looking for, and then the closest being another operator in there too. So what they're doing is they're using this to understand speech and intention. Yeah. And intention is probably the biggest factor in there is that somebody who's looking to go, looking to do something or looking for information on something right. rather than just what that is. If you look back in the past, uh, we had talked about um, cake mix. Yeah. So if I'm looking for a cake mix and Google automatically puts ER at the end of that, you're looking for a cake mixer or a mixing machine. Versus the actual cake mix. Versus a cake make mix. It. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or how do you mix a cake? Well, first, get a machine. No, you need all <laughs> these other things that is part of mixing a cake or baking a cake, which then brings in different words. So it all has to do with understanding the context of what the question or the search is about. And all of this, the, the stuff that actually happens, it's all part of the algorithm. Everything happens on Google's end you're technically not able to influence that from within your website yeah. other than having content that's easy to understand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All okay. wrapped up in a neat little bow. Do you guys get all that? Okay. Ryan has a comment. He says, so Uncle uh, Buford shouldn't build my website. Laugh out loud. Uh, he can, but you better double check his work. <laughs> Who's Uncle Buford? Yes, this anybody is like, guys, <laughs> this is, what? So anybody and every, oh, so it's like uh, Joe Bob. Yeah. But Joe is not Bob and Bob's not Joe. Right, Joe beautiful. Anybody, okay, 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 got it, got it. Kim's catching up. Okay, so that's quite a handful of information. Yes, so did you want to say the words? You're in, right Bert, I, li I just like the word Bert. Bert. Okay. It's kind of fascinating how search engines like throw in like different updates and what they call them and what they don't. For a while, it was all about um, animals and, and locations. And mm -hmm. now we got Bert and maybe, who knows, maybe the next update will be Ernie. Who knows? Um, Buford can't spell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that's kind of the big thing at the end of the day, Ryan. If uh, if the stuff on the website doesn't make sense, it's going to have a hard time ranking. Well, here's so. the easiest thing that popped into my head is like, say that you have a uh, say that you have a word like buck, like you're doing you're selling something buck, but then you misspell it and you do Buick, or you have Buick and then you misspell and do buck, right? Mm -hmm. um, those could have two total different meanings, two total different scenarios, if that makes sense. So. Okay, cool. So that is Bert. So the next update is dun dun dun. Oh yes, I had more updates. Yes. So I've got to I've got to find no, them on my phone. No, no, no. So you had Bert, you had Chrome, and then you had Chrome. Flash. Chrome updates. Where did my piece of paper go? 
I had a piece of paper. Oh, guys. <laughs> What'd you do with my paper? I, I, <laughs> did you love how he blames me? Well, I didn't do anything with it. Are you sitting on it? No, I'm not. Look, you made the camera go fuzzy. I it's did. It's been so long since our camera has been fuzzy. <laughs> there we go. Da. It's all back. Um, no, that's not it. <laughs> Uh, I think you put it in the other room. No, I have it right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, grab my water. Time for drink. Kim, fill. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, what am I filling? <laughs> <laughs> this is your segment. So I, I can't find it, so I'm going off of memory. So here we go. Uh, you want me to get up and go find your paper? No, it, because it was here. I swear it was here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So I can feel the content. So Connor gets the pleasure of going to California on Sunday so he can attend a Google exclusive training on yeah, Monday. Yeah, it's a Google Webmaster event. And he had to review a lot of rules and a lot of regulations because Google has a lot of rules and a lot of regulations. Yeah, so I'm getting to the, I'm going to the Google campus. Yeah. Um, essentially, you have to apply to go to this event mm -hmm. and then they would review it and then pick a selection of people who can attend that event. Yeah. And I happen to get my invite to go. So yeah. I'm kind of excited to go to the uh, the Google campus and uh, and check all of that out. I, I think that could be kind of cool. Yeah. So, Ryan says, did Guinness eat it? Meaning your notes. I think Bailey's would eat yeah, the notes before Guinness. Went. I don't know. But I, I do remember some of the stuff. It really what was on my notes was the dates of things. So let's uh, let's rip into that. Essentially with Chrome, there's a handful of different updates that have happened. Yeah. Uh, there was an update in August and September. Every month, Google makes an update with Chrome, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in August, September time, it was Chrome 76 is what came out. Yeah. Um, and it allowed the feature called lazy load and it allows an image uh, images that are not on the screen, then they wouldn't load automatically in your browser so okay. that your website would load fast. Right. Uh, so there's a line of code that you have to put into your website and it's called lazy load. And I'll put some more information in the description on it. Yeah. But essentially in your image uh, SRC, which is the HTML code inside of there, you have to put in lazy load. And if you do, then everything will load. Quick and uh, fast. When it needs to. Yeah. Right? Quick and fast. So, or as you're scrolling. That's what lazy load is. As Yes, as you're scrolling. So in the past, you've mm -hmm. had to have either JavaScript or you've had to use plugins with WordPress or mm -hmm. Joomla and Drupal and so forth. You've had to have plugins that would do this code for you. Okay. But now it's all built in inherently in Chrome. Nice. So you can reduce the speed of your website, <laughs> reduce the code within your website, and... Uh, everything will be much better. So if you use Chrome. If you use Chrome. You have to use Chrome. Well, if you use Chrome or Chromium, which is the... Chromium. The That's version cool. that... It's like a car. That would be a cool car. Sure. That'd be cool. If somebody called a car Chromium, they have like Navigator and all the other things. Well, they have Chromium Dip, which is for the wheels. Oh. It's I when did, you put you Chrome on it. No. I did. <laughs> okay. So that is essentially Katie, where hi. the lazy load is all about. Okay, so no problems there. Yeah. Uh, the big one that you need to be aware of, mm -hmm. and it's coming out for December, January, and February. It's a three-month rollout. Okay. Essentially, do you remember two years ago, we started on the process of let's make every website HTTPS? Yes. Okay. That was two years ago already? That Gosh. was two years ago. That's fast. All right, so over the time, <laughs> over the years... Um, Google has been moving every website into a secure website, HTTPS. Yeah. And now if you go to a website and it's not in HTTPS, yeah. at the top it says not secure. Okay. Okay. So the problem is that some websites, and we ran into it just the other day on a mm -hmm. site, uh, where the website itself is all in SSL mode or HTTPS. Okay. But they were calling images from inside of there that were not secure. Yeah. And as a result, the entire website is classified as insecure, even though much of it was was okay. All right? Okay. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. 
What's your problem? I I don't have a problem. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm following the thing. I'm following the trail. Hopefully, like other people are okay. from your technology brain. So as of December, when the new update comes out in December, if you have audio or video in your website and it's not secure, yeah. it'll now just have a gray box saying insecure. Okay. Okay. In January, they move to the next step, which is images oh. will no longer display and it'll say insecure. Oh, fascinating. In February, if you're using, and it's called mixed content, when you deliver HTTP and deliver HTTPS. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot so, of PPs and there's a lot of PPSs. There is. So in February, if your website is not fully compliant, your website just won't show. Oof. You got three months to figure that out. 90 it, days. Basically, go to your Chrome browser or whatever you're using. Type in your website domain. Make sure at the top it says secure. If it says not secure, then you need to start doing some work. So December is your first initial audio video. That'll disappear. In January, it'll be images that won't show. And in February, if you're not fully secure, it just won't show your website. Oh, that was what was supposed to happen two years ago, by the way. Yeah. It kind of stringed it out, like quite a lot, actually. But, yeah, a couple cool. years ago, it was supposed to be that the whole website would just be one red page. Do you remember that? Right. Yeah. So. And like right now, if you, um, you don't have a site secure and somebody tries to go and click, sometimes, not all the time, they do get that warning that says, it's like an error. It says, are you sure you want to advance to this website? It's not secure. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's dependent on what their antivirus is, what they're kinked up on. It's not just the browser, correct? For the most part, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you guys have, like, think about this. So from a security standpoint, like, your antivirus, you have it really tightened up where you don't allow specific stuff, and you've kind of given that antivirus permission to say, this is secure, this is not secure. If you go to try to load a website, it could be something very generic, like, uh, maybe you're paying your power bill and the power company doesn't have a secured website, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it'll throw an error. But, and a lot of people don't read the errors, right? They just get really scared. <laughs> Usually it's like a T-Rex broken or something like that. And they get a little scared by that screen. But if you actually look at the bottom, there's a link that says, this website is not secure. If you wish to advance, click here and then go. Well, a lot of people don't click because they actually think that that's potentially a hack. But Which actually, it could be. It, it could be. But in, in general terms, uh, usually your antivirus wants to clean it up. From So from to take a step back, from a business owner perspective, you want to ensure that your website is secure. And SSL, depending on who your web hosting is with, um, your services, it would actually be included as part of the whole enchilada of what you're paying. Mm -hmm. um, other web hosting companies charge a small fee or a different fee for them to be able to install it themselves. So um, I think at this point, it's really important to know and understand that SSL and security is required. And in, in, as you said, in February, if you don't have it, then your website just won't show. Right. And um, it, Google does take some steps on their own that if your website has been defaced, or if they detect malware or a yeah. hack on the website, then they'll stop showing that inside of the search engine results pages. Okay. So they'll do that. Cool. And then Chrome itself, if you're using that, that queries the database back and forth cool. with Google. Yeah. But yeah, clean your stuff up. So get your stuff secure if you're not. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. We offer consulting hours so we can clean that up and give yep. you directions. Okay, uh, so the next thing is Flash. Flash. Which is your favorite thing to talk about. Flash is my favorite. Because so, you like to tell them no. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and uh, Barry Schwartz, he runs a uh, search engine roundtable. Uh, he had a tweet out there and it was kind of cool. You're potentially uh, meeting Barry. Yeah. Uh, hopefully potentially meet, meeting Barry on Monday. Hopefully to meet up with him. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I don't know when. Yes. Monday, I think. Um, but essentially his tweet was Flash is dead again. Again. So the thing is that years ago, now we were talking back in the 90s, mid 90s, uh, kind of wrapped a little bit into the early 2000s, but the mid 90s, Adobe came out with Shockwave and Shockwave Flash. Okay. And that allowed you to make uh, interactive websites. Stuff on the website would move around, and um, it was all kind of like a, a, a mini movie. Okay. It was, that was the experience yeah. that we were trying to go with. Um, Flash died a horrible death. <laughs> <laughs> Not the movie, guys. Not the movie, no. the website design. Uh, the TV show died a horrible death, there, too. The, but. Well, the, the thing is, is like, we have to give Flash its... Um, 
I don't know. Like we have to give Flash just a moment to say at one point Flash was really cool and served a lot of businesses and served a lot of different like there was there was a trend with Flash. Yeah. Like it did what it needed to do for yes. the calibration for how long it lasted. Yeah, Flash was the new and up and coming. It's what kind of led the way for Java. Yeah. Java is what's used now on your mobile devices. It's cross-platform. Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be in just one particular thing. Yeah. Um, but even back in the 90s, when the search engines were trying to scan websites, mm -hmm. they couldn't scan anything that was in Flash. Right. So the rule has always been don't build a website, an informational website in Flash. Yeah. Uh, you can use it for interactive things. One of the things that it was used for, uh, Mercedes-Benz used to mm -hmm. have it, where you could change the color of the inside of the car. You could click and drag and move seats out of there and add different so things So it's cool, in. like, interface stuff. Yeah. It was an awesome interface. Uh, HTML5 came along, or HTML4, and then HTML5 came along. Yeah. And that allowed you to do everything that you could do in Flash, you could now do in HTML. Cool. So that was the end of Flash. Uh, now, essentially, within the last two weeks, Google has now stated that they will no longer, they figured out how to index Flash, but now they're saying they will no longer do Flash. Nobody supports it. It's not supported by any browser yeah. unless you put a plug in. It's very easy to hack. It's very easy to hack in the background and a mm -hmm. user not know that they've been hacked. Mm -hmm. um, so from a security standpoint, it's a good thing to get rid of. Adobe hasn't updated it in years. Right. So, And there are designers out there that are still doing Flash, right? So the thought process is um, some people have specific skills in development. Other people do not have specific skills in development. If you are getting into conversations, Flash is not the direction to go. If you mm -hmm. hear that or if it's being offered, it's recommended to turn around and go somewhere else. Um, but the thought process, again, is to give Flash the kudos because at one point it did help. And I think that whenever Flash was coming around and then the search engines and, and all this stuff, I'm not really sure back then. I mean, I think somebody had a big picture vision, but I'm not sure the search engines knew that they were going to be as far as they are now with all the different stuff as they were back when Flash hit, right? right. Just kind of like the easiest way to compare that is MySpace versus Facebook versus Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest, all of it. So it's like almost like an evolution. So um, if you are a business that is in Flash, it's recommended to get uh, it converted or uh, you can't even convert Flash, no, but have it rebuilt, like have your uh, brand rebuilt, right, in a different platform. That it's more acceptable and um, more compatible basically mm -hmm. with the search engines, right? Because what happens on Flash, and I know eventually just like the security, it might do the same thing. But right now, if you go to Flash, it just doesn't load. Like nothing loads. Right? Unless you have a plugin. Unless you have a plugin, but we don't know how long that's going to last, right? right? So like the thing is, is like in Flash specifically, the, the websites I come across, like it's, hey, we've got these things that flip in and flip out, but you can't read the content because the content's built within the thing that flips in and flips out, right? Um, and, so I yeah. did an audit of a website, I think two years ago, maybe three, but I think it was two. And their logo uh, spun around in a circle. Yes. It was a, it was a box and it was a 3D box that spun around in a circle. Yeah. That was all done in flesh. Did it look cool? The owner thought it was cool. I, I just thought it was a gimmick. Um, but it could have been done in, inside of using a, an animated GIF or yeah. whatnot. But um, essentially it was done in flesh, which meant that that part of their website would not load if the users did not have that plugin. Well, essentially now... Uh, Google is not going to index any of it. And, you know, if you're using Flash, go ahead and get rid of yeah. it. We've spent more time talking about Flash in this <laughs> than I've ever spent in Flash. It is what it is, right? That's the reason why we're here is to give you some updates of things that you need to know about and things coming down the pipeline, right? Yep. Um, the other part too, guys, it is the first of the month. So if you have not made a backup of your website, please do so. Um, it's really important to not just make a backup with a web host, but get it downloaded to your desktop. Connor's going to be um, doing some videos here soon where it kind of gives you some examples of how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to it, I, there has been, at least in the last couple weeks, we have gotten a accelerated uh, volume of people that have websites that kind of got hacked or there's malicious activity going on in their websites. If you guys have WordPress specifically, that's the, the playground that we're in and you do not have your plugins updated, it is highly recommended to get those updated to the newest release 
um, and or find experts like ourselves that can get them updated to the newest release. There is some stuff going on in the background. Tis the season of holidays. Um, some people that like to be a little malicious, this is the season that they do it. Um, a lot of I times. I smile, not because <laughs> this is what I'm doing. No, no, but it's, no. This so, has always been my busy time yeah, of year. It's, it, and the other thing, too, is uh, usually it's not who you think it is that's doing this stuff. Usually it's younger kids that are just kind of creative and want, trying to flex their muscle to figure out what can they do and how can they do it. Um, and, and some of them are actual bigger companies. Some of them are actually individuals. So what we always say is at the end of the day, just keep your stuff updated and keep a backup. Um, with the backups, something that you had referenced to a client not that long ago, um, was whenever we were talking about backups, they had a friend that their website got compromised, right? And it was like, they made a backup every 24 hours. But the thing is, is like, they check their website on Thursday, but they didn't come back and check on it until Tuesday. And it was already compromised. And even though the web hosting made a backup every 24 hours, the backup of the backup of the backup that got cleared of the backup, every single file was compromised, right? right. Um, so with this, I would say if you guys are not already doing it, make a habit once a week, if not twice a week, just to load your website and take a tour of it. Um, just ensure everything looks the way that it needs to just, keep everything updated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to even make sure your website exists. We had a, a client there, and I talked about it last week. Yeah, where they uh, they hadn't been to their website in several months. It was like a so, long. It was more than just several. I think it was like six or seven months. They're like, "Oh, where did it go?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah, like, how do you trying to do the track down at that point? That can be. A I get challenge. it though, right? Like we get busy in our businesses, but website is very, very important, especially uh, if this is your peak season. Yep. Make sure you're in it. And around it. Um, again, uh, first of the month, make sure you update your passwords. If you're comfortable with that, try not to make it. So it, try not to make it your kids, your pet names, your street addresses, the business name, your uh, sports team. Sports teams is the almost the number one password that gets hacked. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would because uh, like think about this, guys. People can go and scrape your Facebook, and a lot of yeah. times, even if your Facebook's where friends of friends can only see it. It, it right now it doesn't take much for somebody to create a file, which I think we just got a message for that. Create a file of a falsified account that is not actually that friend, but you wouldn't think about it because right. the pictures are the same, the profiles are the same, stuff like that. So it's kind of a little bit of a dark stuff that we're talking about, but it's really important to get everything updated yeah. and get it secure. As a as somebody that used to do stuff in the past, I, I had to... <laughs> he well, I, I was gonna no. say <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> I had to do the hacking in a way to be able to learn how to prevent the hacking. Yeah. Okay. So that's what, when yeah, I say I technically that, can't say that you didn't do it because there was companies that actually hired him to do it, to but they it. owned, right. they owned the thing that was being compromised. Yeah. So. And so knowing that back then, back in the nineties and, and, uh, and early two thousands, yeah. if Facebook was around back then, it would have been so much easier to guess people's passwords yeah. because all that information is supplied on, on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Um, so that information is out there. But mm -hmm. as you said, make your backup, do your password stuff, um, you know, and, and that's all you can do. Just don't make it, don't make it easy. Yeah. Okay. That's what we Anything do. else? Uh, no. So uh, get your uh, plugins updated, right? Mm -hmm. Get your passwords updated. Uh, go ahead and watch if you're just now tuning in at the very beginning to know what's coming down the pipeline and what has already been released. Bert. 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 Not Ernie. Bert Solo this time around. Ernie might come around. You never know. Never know. Um, Chrome as well as Flash. Those are the three subjects that we discussed today. But in the meantime, we do wish you guys a great weekend. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in live as well as the replay. Here is our Facebook URL in the screen. So you can like our page if you have not already so you get notifications. Twitter, if that's your tweet tweet, if that's what you like. Um, and then, of course, our YouTube. So Connor will take this file. He'll do whatever all the magic is, transcribe it, put it into YouTube. So that way, if you're not really a video watcher or if we said something but we talked really, really fast, then you have it in writing, right? <laughs> but in the meantime, thank you so much, everybody. And we wish you guys a great day. And we'll chat soon. All right, guys. Bye. Have a good day now. Bye-bye. I got the, the movie chair. Get the movie chair. I get the swirl chair. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. Thank you.